Susan Gardner here from Municipal World. I'm at the 2018 Mike Conference, Municipal Innovators uh, in Calgary, Alberta. And joining me in our media center is Gabrielle Scrimshaw. You um, mentioned this morning about the changing nature of um, the Indigenous community in Canada. What does that look like? Well, it means a few things. Uh, first is that we're an incredibly young population. So I myself am First Nations, uh, started a nonprofit organization working with Indigenous professionals. So I've traveled all across Canada and we're an incredibly young population. So about half the population is under the age of 30, um, three out of 10 are under the age of 14. What does that mean? It means that in the next decade, we're gonna have almost half a million Indigenous youth entering the workforce in Canada. Um, so that's one important thing. We're also growing. Uh, we have four times the growth rate of non-Indigenous population in Canada. We're also increasingly more urbanized, moving to cities for education and work opportunities, and also uh, investing more and more in education. So there's all these shifting factors that are kind of leading us to a special moment in time as a country. Okay, so obviously some um, with those changes, some big implications mm -hmm. for municipalities and of local course, governments. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean if you're a municipal decision maker uh, in 2018? What does that mean for you? Yeah, so it means a couple of things. So the first is kind of internally to even, you know, the team and kind of organization that, you know, these leaders are running. That if you think about the 400,000 Indigenous youth that are going to be entering the workforce, that, you know, these people are people who might be their um, employees are potentially going to be Indigenous. So that kind of brings along this question of how do we create inclusive workplaces? How do we have these conversations? Because in many ways, many Canadians, um, either through education or even, you know, moving to this country, weren't offered the opportunity to learn about Indigenous history. So I think that's an important aspect. But then the other aspect, of course, has to do with the communities that, you know, that you're living and working. That if we have 50% of Indigenous, so that's First Nations, Métis, Inuit people in Canada, live in cities. And we know that that number is growing, and it's growing uh, for reasons that it grows for other communities. Uh, people want jobs, jobs are in cities, people want educational opportunities that are often in cities. So you're also going to see this kind of population shift of, you know, the communities that, you know, you're kind of building and working with. Um, so thinking about how to bring in Indigenous voices, how to either do consultations with the communities that are there is incredibly important. So what I encourage people to do is to, you know, to reach out to um, the Indigenous peoples that are local to them. There's a great website called nativeland.ca. Um, and you can put in your postal code and it'll tell you if you have a treaty area, what community is there. And that's a great jumping off point to start to start to learn about the land um, where your community is based as a good first step. Your organization, uh, what, does, uh, what do you do to help forward kind of those objectives? Yeah, so uh, the organization that I started several years ago called the Aboriginal Professional Association of Canada, and we work specifically with Indigenous professionals. More often than not, these people are the first in their family to get a university education, um, the first in their family to work in a large envir a corporate environment or even a government environment, and we kind of help them navigate that path, um, while at the same time, you know, helping them stay true and kind of keep those deep roots of who they are as Indigenous peoples. So it's kind of a twofold thing of helping and support them, but also at the same time, providing a safe space to keep rooted in kind of who we are as a cultural community. Um, so our organization, first and foremost, uh, focuses on Indigenous professionals. Uh, and then we also liaise with a lot of other organizations who want to learn about Indigenous professionals. I understand, you know, personally that, again, many people weren't offered the opportunity to learn about Indigenous issues in Canada. And what they do learn is on the six o'clock news, and that's not the whole story. So we've been living beside one another for a very long time. I believe it's, start, it's time that we start actually getting to know one another. That's fantastic. I think that's important work that you're doing. Thank and you. Uh, your presentation here at the conference was very moving. If people want to learn more about your organization and uh, your story, yeah. uh, what is the website? There's two websites. So the first is I have a uh, personal website that has a lot of my publishing and kind of the advocacy that I've done, gabriellescrimshaw.com. Um, and then the organization, the nonprofit organization is aboriginalprofessionals.org. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us here. Yeah, I appreciate it. Me. Thanks. I'm Susan Gardner. We share your stories. Thank you.